Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode one of our TCW series in TW 2020. Yes, this is our first Seaverse series on the channel. Uh, we've done several real world mods as you guys have seen and we've actually got another one set to debut here pretty soon. Uh, but we decided to jump into the Seaverse and TCW is going to be the first company we do a save with as noted uh, previously. Uh, I am going to eventually do a series with Raw and probably in YCW too, because all three companies uh, got a pretty much popular vote, I guess you could say, uh, in the comments section. So uh, there was a lot of momentum for all three of these companies from you guys voting. So I'm just going to kind of spread out probably the start dates for um, those saves, but uh, it will be TCW, Raw will be second, NYCW in that order. So depending on what you know we, we get to and how things start to flow with each of these saves, that's the kind of order I'm going to go in. Um, so that way, if you guys are interested, um, there you go. That's kind of the, the order we'll have. But I do want to, uh, they're all three very different. And that's why I think that they're all valuable saves probably on the channel for those wanting to get into the Z-verse. So you guys know I like to play a lot of saves and that's what we will do. But for now, we are going to TCW because that is going to be our starting point here for this particular series. And, um, you know, we start off here, of course, I... You guys know I've done the Exploring the Seaverse series. You can check out my entire video uh, on TCW, kind of going through the entire company and looking at all the different things in that. But this will be more, you know, based around the booking part of it and what we're going to actually try to achieve here. So we are sitting as the third in the world. Um, so, you know, if we start things off, this is a little bit different than some of the other saves I've done because we're trying to catch the big boys now uh, with USPW1, SWF is two. You know, do have 21 CW near you. A little bit different situation there, but these are still the big three in terms of where they're at. We are third in that list, so we're trying to get out of that and become the number one company in the world. We have, I'm not worried about cash. We have $10 million. We'll be okay there. Uh, I did look at sort of the financial aspect of it because, again, I've, I'm used to playing with WWE, AW, all that, as you guys know. So I you don't have to worry about the finances ever, but now I do have to start looking at finances a little bit as I use um, some of these Seaverse companies. And that'll be more specifically the case, probably with like an NYCW save, uh, which I think they don't start with a lot of money at all. $40,000 maybe, or maybe I just made that up. Um, but so, you know, looking kind of the monthly wage bill, getting an idea of what the roster looks like, um, you know, sponsorship income, all that. So I, I really, again, this is something, this portion of the game I haven't really paid a lot of attention to because we've mostly been focused on the stories and we've been playing as companies that have no no shortage of money whatsoever, uh, but that's not the case here. So we're at 80% prestige, 72% momentum. Our first event's going to be TD, DCW Malice in Wonderland. Uh, that's going to take place, um, you know, at the end of January. So I'm used to this schedule here. As I mentioned in the... Um, the, the one of the videos I did, I may actually change up the schedule a little bit. And you guys will see what I'm talking about if I decide to make that change. I haven't decided yet, but uh, it is something I'm thinking about in terms of changing up this monthly schedule a little bit. Uh, but we do have a weekly TV show, two-hour show. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't have two shows a week. Um, sorry, Saturday Night Showcase. You're probably not returning anytime soon. Then again, you never know with me. Um, so you, you may re not return in your weekly form. Let's just put it that way. Um, but... We do have this show every week, so one show to focus on um, at the moment. I do like that idea, and so, yeah, building towards Malice and Wonderland, we start in January. Um, you know, roster-wise, I think we've kind of, again, gone through this. I don't remember what I had this filtered by. I think it was by push. I was putting together my spreadsheet um, for TCW, so... Uh, you know, again, this is kind of a roster that's not very big, 37 workers on it. I really like that aspect. I've already gone through the roster, looked at everyone, kind of plugged in in my spreadsheet, um, you know, the gimmicks, and, and I'm actually doing the background notes from the bios and all that. That'll help me storyline-wise. And so uh, we're putting all that together now to, to kind of get things going from a booking standpoint. Uh, as I've said before, if you're watching this sort of for the first time, you haven't seen any other videos We've done TCW-wise. These are the big four, and um, you know we'll probably play it up that way, <laughs> assuming that they all stay, and that is going to be, I think, one of the challenges is we are a medium company. Um, you know, Size-wise, uh, we are essentially at war, if not having a hostile relationship with the other two top companies. We're at war with SWF, um, have a hostile attitude towards USPW. 
I don't know. Maybe we need to, you know, how, how do we approach that from a standpoint of, of making sure we can keep some of our top workers? Uh, for now, if you look at kind of our contract status of these four, um, they are all under exclusive written contracts at the moment. You can kind of see when they expire. Wolf in five years, Andrews in four years. Uh, you know, so you can kind of look at it from that standpoint, from a contract that is. So um, it's just kind of looking at it down the line more so than than recent. Uh, you know, short term versus long term is kind of what we're looking at with some of these stars. And so you've got an interesting group underneath kind of the top four. Uh, when you look at people, you know, like Joshua Taylor, I think he was in the main event uh, of the last show, which that's kind of the the story that's being pushed uh, heading into the start of January here. Um, you know, you've got Mighty Mo, you've got a bunch of different kind of interesting uh, characters here. So, yeah, I mean, this is, um, you know, going through the roster, I think this was one of the most appealing aspects is just really that top four and then the creative section. I like this, actually. I don't, I don't have to hide a lot in terms of, like, versus some of the real-world mods. But you look at, like, the hot prospects. I know someone mentioned Killer Shark in the um, in the video I did, you know, that led to this series, kind of choosing the first Seaver series to, to sign Killer Shark. Well, he's definitely here. T-Bone Bright, we talked about him before in one of the videos. Um, Yoshihara is someone else, 21 years old, really good skills. I like him. I've already kind of started carving out some ideas uh, for him, and there are some other people as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, um, you know, roster-wise, it's nice to see that your top four are your showstoppers. Um, so these guys can really carry a lot in terms of their in-ring performances, um, you know, and it's pretty much the same when it comes to uh, everything else. And so... Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of interesting uh, talents uh, on one roster here, and I think it, it really does make it very fascinating uh, in terms of, of everyone that's here. I mean, you know, Greg Gage is here, Jay Cord's here, so there's there's a lot of fun you can have with that. In terms of who hot who's hot to start with, uh, Andrews, you know, Gord won in an army, Freddie Huggins, Wolf Hoggins, they're all in the hot category. Danny Fonzarelli, we got to get him some – some momentum here. Same for Bart Biggins uh, as well. So Hidden Gems, I've already started taking a look at some people there. Uh, so we'll see if we bring anybody in right off the bat. I, I bet there are some people out there, based on some comments I've left, that can be, that at least guess one person I'm going to bring in. Because I feel like I always do it in my my C Versailles. But there is, there is someone that I know I'm going to bring in for sure. Um, all right, let's talk about something else that's a little bit different here than the real world saves. The storylines. As you guys know, when I do the real world saves, most of the time pretty much all the time, I don't use the starting storylines, even, you know, depending on the time period and all that, I don't really ever use those in a sense. Now there, I will, again, kind of bring it into the the story um, if needed, but I don't necessarily use that as the starting point. Uh, this will be different. I have decided, you know what, I'm going to lean into all of these kind of as a starting challenge here. So all five of these storylines that are here, I'm going to use those to begin with. So um, we can kind of see where things are at. The the Aaron Andrews Wolf Hawkins feud, um, you know, after Hawkins, you know, became the King of Kings back in November. We're going to build on this feud, the collision course to this. Um, you've got you know Cord versus Bach here, and so um, you know Cord potentially kind of being elevated, uh, future series against one of your other top stars. You've got the Elite, <laughs> Elites everywhere. Um, you've got the Elite against Divine Fortune. Um, sort of in the tag team title picture. So that's something else. Uh, the rise of Greg Gage. That's another kind of story that you're starting to build. He's the television champion. Uh, and then where's the beef? I mean, we've we got some beef on this roster, folks. I'm just going to tell you. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of it. And so I like the, the behemoths versus the mighty meaty. Uh, this is my kind of feud right here. We are going to have some fun with the beef. I'll tell you that. So uh, I'm going to lean into all five of these and kind of craft a a background story uh, on some of these and yeah that's going to be our starting storyline so that's a little bit different than, than i usually do but i've decided that i'm going to make that our starting point and then we can kind of build off into different directions uh, from there title picture as we said um television champion is greg gage world heavyweight champions aaron andrews our tag champions killer shark and titan so uh, just uh, just a bunch of hosses here on the tag team section so uh, I'm trying to see what else we need to look at. As mentioned, you've already seen the event schedule, um, you know, stables. We do have uh, the Center Society with Eddie Peak and Killer Shark in there. Got the Syndicate, our main stable with Wolf Hawkins, Doc Hammond, Eddie Chandler, Nate Johnson, Chris Flynn, the muscle. Um, hell of a stable there. 
Uh, and we've got a good tag team division, not a lot of teams, but uh, I do like, you know, just kind of the, the interesting characters involved. Probably not, you know, the deepest tag team division, but we only have 37 wrestlers on the roster. I think you have to remember that as well. Uh, I guess we, I forgot to look at the size to kind of give you guys a starting point. 77 is what we need to reach to get to big. Um, so we're not that far away from, from hitting that, that mark. And it's just a matter of how quickly can we do it. We know that opens up opportunities if we're able to hit that. Uh, level our coverage uh, all in America in terms of our, our very big coverage. So if we want to expand beyond that, we certainly have that option as we start to grow uh, and get towards that big mark. Once again, um, you know, child companies, we don't have any of those developmental. We do have. Um, so we've got some people in developmental here we can take a look at, uh, including uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, you know, we've got a lot of different people that, that we can, um, you know, look at in terms of just looking at the developmental. There's some young people on the roster. I really like that. Uh, anything else we need to look at here? Um, you know, we've got the training facility, the School of Pro Wrestling. Training level at 70%. We always kind of talk about that and how we need to increase some of those. I mentioned the relationships earlier. You know, we're just accepting developmental workers from, from Mid-Atlantic um, or, excuse me, Mid-Atlantic's accepting workers uh, from us. Uh, PGHW, uh, we can have excursions so workers can come from there. So I think that opens up an interesting group because I really like the the Pride Gloriana wrestling roster. Uh, and then we mentioned the declaring war on SWF, no surprise, hostile attitude with USPW. So the top two don't like us. Uh, we don't like them. And that is the challenge here. As we move forward quickly, the backstage environment, no worries there, except for maybe Jay. We can't let him get too far off the, the wrong path here because we need to keep Jay uh, in, in motion as uh, one of our, our top stars for sure. So uh, that is where it stands for TCW here as we kick things off. And as you'll see, I'm, I am going to present these Seaverse series a little bit differently than I have been doing uh, the real world mods just to make them a little different. Uh, we may have some videos that are a special or specifically designed uh, around certain stories, certain characters. And again, you'll see what I'm talking about as we start to release these. But uh, I do want to make this, I don't want to say more immersive because I think, I think our real world mods are pretty immersive, but you can immerse yourselves in them quite well, I think, in the stories and stuff. But we are going to try some things on this because I think there'll be a lot of fun to really dive into the history, the background of some of these characters, and to push some stories uh, I think we can have a lot of fun with on this. So that is your initial kind of look at TCW as we kick things off. We will start with our weekly TV show, uh, Total Wrestling. That will be our Tuesday show. And as I said, I may switch up the schedule a little bit, uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about as we start to get into that. And I'll probably announce it um, once I make that official decision. But we, uh, there you go, guys. I appreciate all the great feedback that you guys have given on these Seaver saves and what you want to see. Like I said, it has led to, you know, me having the idea of actually running three different Seaver saves, but I'm just going to probably stagger them a little bit rather than start them all at once. Uh, I've got some pretty fun ideas to, to really have some fun with the Seaverse. It's just something different for me, having run all the real world mods on the channel, and I'm really excited to jump into uh, the Seaverse and have a lot of fun, do some experimenting, and really look at things as they stand on that. But quickly, before we, we wrap up, so this is what I meant by Psycho Circus. That's when Aaron Andrews defended the title against Joshua Taylor. Um, and so Wolf Hawkins came out, stare down. And so just kind of that's one of the narratives you start off with here. So that's our starting point for TCW. As we officially get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys as always for the feedback. And on the next episode of our TCW Save, it will be Total Wrestling for January Week 1.